We crack right on. I have to reach in here to have the memory of a sieve. We have the next act. Yes, I want you to go wild and go crazy. Please welcome on stage, Mr. John Whiting. Yes. I kind of think myself into a little box and I get quite scared. <laughs> I used to be locked into cupboards when I was a child. I promise not to tell anybody about that. <laughs> anyway, it's those things in life that we really love, you know. Mountains, trees, leaves, the wind. Raindrops keep falling on my head. I must fix that roof. <laughs> And it's those other things like bus lanes, 24-hour bus lanes, <laughs> traffic calming. Did it ever calm you when they turned two lanes into one? <laughs> or three lanes into two? <laughs> when you're having to dodge the other cars and they're screaming at you and everyone's honking their horn? Did that make you feel calm? It didn't make me feel calm. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> anyway, I'm in therapy as you... <laughs> you may or may not have guessed. I promise not to tell anybody about that too. Anyway, I have a lovely therapist. Her name is June. And she's been asking me a lot of deep questions recently. And she sent me to another therapist of the name of Tracy, who is like a byline therapist. And I didn't even know what a byline therapist was. And apparently they deal with past lives. So I get in the chair and she's talking to me and say, John, we're going to just talk to you and we're going to trance. So I say, okay. So she seemed very nice, so I agreed to go into a trance. And I didn't go into a trance, but she had me in the chair and she said, okay, John, we're going to talk about your past lives. I said, what? I'm having enough problems with this life. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother wants me to have children, she wants grandchildren. And so does my father, they, they keep saying, John, when are you going to have some children? I'm saying, give me a break, I'm trying to impregnate as many people as I can. <laughs> Which of course isn't true, it's a lie. I don't have a girlfriend. Well, I haven't had for the past ten years. <laughs> but anyway, one of my favourite things is Chinese food. And you know, while I'm thinking a lot at home, as I do, pacing around and around in circles, I have, I have oh, I forgot to tell you, I have a blood sugar problem. If I don't eat on time, I get quite strange, even stranger than I am now. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, I, I usually eat at 5.30, 6 o'clock. And for some reason, my alarm clock didn't go off that day. So I'm pacing around the room. I suddenly noticed at half past ten I've been thinking a lot about the stars and the moon and the people they put on the moon and, and why we haven't sold tickets to the moon yet. Anyway, I, I'm feeling really hungry and I realise it's half past ten, the supermarket's closed. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have some Chinese food. And I love Chinese, so I look on the calendar and I realise I've had Chinese for the past 16 days every single day. <laughs> and I've been in there on my own every single day. I'm a real loser. I've got to bring a friend. I've got to bring a girlfriend with me to the Chinese just so they think I had some kind of a life. <laughs> so I'm going through my back book. And nobody really lives in my neighbourhood. I call a couple of people and they're at the other side of town. They've got their mobile telephony sets. It's a miracle. And I can't get a girl to come to the Chinese with me. And I think, well, maybe I should look for a man. You know, maybe I should be gay. It's quite trendy to experiment with being gay. I mean, I've got red shoes, I might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice to see you. And that could be gay, couldn't I? Anyway, 
anyway. <laughs> now I'm getting really hungry. That's not funny anymore. Something I know. At least somebody's going to come to the to the Chinese with me, and I think my neighbour. She's nice. She'll come to the Chinese with me. So I call her and I say, "Hello, Shushma. Will you come to the Chinese with me?" She's, "Oh yes, John. I'd love to come." And she's sixty, which is fine. <laughs> Maybe she's my mother. Except she's Indian. <laughs> so we're having a lot of problems. All the time I'm just getting hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And it's kind of scary. Anyway, I'm going to pass out my notebook now. If anyone's interested in having babies, they'll just be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Experimenting with uh, sexuality. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>